This is question number 78 in chapter 7 of the textbook. It's a doozy and it reads, a 0 0.25 kilogram skeet, which is a clay target, uh, is fired at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizon with a speed of 25 meters per second. Uh, when it reaches the maximum height, it is hit from below by a 15 gram pellet traveling vertically upward at a speed of 200 meters per second. Uh, the pellet is embedded in the skeet. How much higher does the skeet go up and how much extra distance delta x does the skeet travel because of this collision? Uh, great question. Uh, definitely a lot of good physics here. Um, we can see I've made a sketch. Uh, this little uh, triangle thing in here is supposed to um, represent the pellet. It's being fired from below vertically upwards here. You can see that this red box uh, represents the skeet, the clay pigeon. So it's moving along a very familiar uh, trajectory here. However, uh, on a regular day, this is what we're doing, but in this, in this particular problem, the pellet embeds itself into the clay pigeon. Uh, that should be kind of cueing you uh, to the idea that this is an uh, inelastic collision. And then instead of continuing along uh, this red uh, path on the second half, it's then given some initial uh, vertical velocity again, which then uh, creates a slightly different trajectory. Uh, this is important uh, because uh, we have to basically model for it. So this is a little different than anything that you've seen before. The question is essentially asking us uh, to answer, okay, first, um, how much higher? What is this uh, change in height? And uh, let's see here. Oops. Uh, sorry about that. What is this uh, change in height? Uh, above this line. So I've uh, put this line in here and so they want to know what this uh, delta y is and then likewise they want to know the difference here between these two points. We'll call that delta x. So uh, they're looking for these two values. We have a bunch of information given to us. I've already written that down. Let's start this question. The first thing uh, you should feel comfortable doing um, is uh, solving for uh, the range using the range equation. So let's go ahead and start with that. The range equation is going to be uh, v naught squared, or the initial velocity, times the sine of twice the angle theta divided by g. You already have all of the numbers that you need uh, to kind of do this. So let's go ahead and put in our initial velocity. That's going to be 25 meters per second. We have to remember to square that. And we're going to multiply it by the sine of twice 30 or you can just say the sine is 60 divided by 9.8. Um, processing that, you're going to get a range of 55.2 meters. So now you have uh, the distance uh, to this position. Let's just call that position A right here. And uh, now uh, the second thing that, uh, that we would do logically is then say, all right, well, how much further is this going to be? We have to know some more information about what's going on here at this point of collision. So this obviously becomes our focus point for the, for the balance of the problem, or at least this intermediate step. Let's go ahead and uh, proceed. Let's uh, acknowledge that it's going to have both um, uh, horizontal and uh, vertical components of momentum. Uh, the horizontal component of the momentum just before it collides is going to be the mass of the ski times the velocity of the skeet in the x direction. And of course, when it reaches that uh, point of interest right here, uh, we know that um, when it reaches that point that it's going to have no y velocity. So therefore, we can say that the momentum in the y direction, which you know logically is going to be mass times velocity of the skeet in the y direction, but we know that's equal to zero. So therefore, we can say that the momentum of the skeet before the collision in the y direction is going to be equal to zero. We also know that uh, the momentum of the bullet in the y direction is known. We know its mass and its velocity. Uh, we also know that the momentum of this uh, pellet in the x direction is going to be equal to zero because it's not moving in the x direction. So let's go ahead and uh, proceed here. Let's take a look at the momentum before. This is the, the momentum of uh, the skeet. I should put a subscript here, uh, S. So momentum of the skeet, the x. Momentum of the skeet, the y. Momentum of the pellet, x, we know is going to be zero. We've just discussed that. And the momentum of the pellet in the y direction is going to be upwards 
mass of the pellet times that 200 meters per second, which is the velocity of the pellet before the collision. So now we can use conservation of momentum. This is, of course, before uh, the collision occurs. And so now we can say that after the collision occurs, we're going to have the same business going on. So therefore, the momentum in the uh, x direction after the collision is simply going to be the momentum of the skeet in the x direction plus uh, the momentum uh, of the pellet in the x direction, which is zero. So we can say that the momentum in the x direction finally is going to be equal to the uh, mass of the skeet times the velocity of the skeet uh, in the x direction. Keep in mind uh, what I've written right here. Uh, if we just wanted to know the momentum in the x direction, that would be sufficient. But we want to know what the velocity is in the uh, x direction. So therefore, we're going to have to say the total mass or the mass of uh, the, um, the pellet plus the mass of the skeet times the final velocity after the collision is equal to the mass of the skeet, velocity of the skeet in the x direction. Okay, so uh, I have an equation that's going to help me solve for the momentum in the x direction. Uh, more specifically, I don't uh, necessarily need the momentum, but I do need the speed uh, in the x direction. And that's really uh, what I'm going to solve this for. So it's going to become uh, Vx is equal to uh, the mass of the skeet times the velocity of the skeet. Of course, this is in the x direction, divided by the total mass, which is the mass of the skeet plus the mass of the pellet. When I do all of that, I get an uh, x component of velocity. This is the combined velocity in the x direction after the collision of uh, 20.42 meters per second. That's plugging in the number uh, uh, for mass. This is mass of the skeet. 0 0.25 kilograms velocity of the skeet in the x direction uh, is going to be uh, a critical piece here. This is just the x component of velocity. I can find that resolving this initial velocity vector into the x and y components. So I can say velocity of the skeet x is that initial velocity times the cosine of theta, or 25 times the cosine of 30, and I get 21.65 meters per second. So uh, this is what I plugged in right here for uh, velocity of the skeet x direction. And then I have to divide it by the sum of the mass of the skeet, again, 0.25 kilograms, plus the mass of the pellet, which is 0.015 kilograms. You need to make sure that you convert that, um, the mass of the pellet. OK, um, so I get 20.42 meters per second is the speed in the, x er, uh, speed in the x direction. In the y direction, I'm going to do something similar. Now, everything that I did right here, is logical, but doesn't necessarily conform with the way I've been presenting it normally uh, in class. So let's go ahead and do that uh, one time uh, in the y direction. So everything here is in the x. I'm going to do the y direction down here in the uh, in the left hand corner. Okay, so uh, I can say then that uh, the sum of the momentum in the system in the y direction. Uh, before the collision must be equal to the sum of the momentum in the system in the y direction after the collision. Uh, that means that I can say that I have the momentum of the skeet plus the momentum of the pellet before the collision, oops, that should be an equal sign, is equal to the momentum of the skeet after the collision plus the momentum of the pellet after the collision. Right off the gate, right out of the gate, again, uh, the momentum of the skeet in the y direction before the collision is zero. It's moving, but not vertically. So therefore, the y component of its momentum vector is zero. And I'm left with something that looks like this. Uh, now I can uh, separate each one of these terms into its parts. That becomes mass of the pellet times uh, the velocity of the pellet. Oops, hold on one sec velocity of the pellet is equal to, this is before the collision, is equal to the mass of the skeet times the velocity of this uh, skeet after the collision plus 
the mass of the pellet times the velocity of the pellet after the collision. Notice that I've used the same variable, V prime. Since this is inelastic, they hit and stick together. I'll factor that out now. I get uh, mass of the skeet plus mass of the pellet times uh, final velocity after the collision is equal to, uh, on the left-hand side, nothing has changed, mass of the pellet times the velocity of pellet before impact. I've got everything that I need uh, to kind of go forward with this. So, oops. Okay, I'm ready to solve now uh, for the, um, oops, my mistake. All right, sorry about that. I'm ready to solve for this guy now, and um, so I'm going to basically get V prime is equal to mass of the pellet, velocity of the pellet, divided by uh, mass of the uh, skeet plus mass of the pellet. And uh, when I run those numbers through, mass of the pellet, of course, 0 0.015 kg. Uh, velocity of the pellet is going to be the 200 meters per second. This is all y direction divided by the combined mass, which is um, the mass of the pellet, 0.25 kilograms. Sorry, mass of the skeet plus the mass of the pellet, which is 0.015 kg, is equal to v prime, the velocity in the y direction after the collision. And uh, what I'm going to get uh, when I uh, when I run that through my calculator is 11.32. Uh, meters per second. So now I have the y velocity at the top of the collision path. I also have the x velocity. Let's keep in mind that's the x velocity right after the collision. So I've used conservation of momentum now. The rest of this problem is just using some other physics skills to see if I can figure out now what happens. So uh, in the next part of this problem, uh, I'm going to uh, treat this like a fresh projectile problem. Let's make another quick sketch here. Uh, so let's remember that originally this thing uh, does something like that, uh, ends over here. And uh, I want to figure out, uh, you know, now, now that I have this new x and y component of velocity, I'm treating it like a fresh projectile problem now in red. Um, in order to do that, though, I need to figure out uh, what this vertical uh, y, this uh, y height is. Where am I starting from, from the reference plane or the ground? I know that uh, if I use the initial data, the x, y data here from uh, the initial trajectory information, the initial uh, velocity vector, I know that the y component of velocity here is going to be equal to zero, and I can use that to find my delta y. Let's go ahead and use uh, the third equation uh, of kinematics, vf squared is equal to VO squared plus 2A delta Y. Solving for delta Y, I get VF squared, which is 0, minus VO squared, which is going to be V sine theta, divided by 2 times A is equal to delta Y. Of course, A is going to be negative 9.8. Uh, and I'm going to get 0 minus V sine theta squared my y component of velocity divided by 2 times negative 9.8. And these numbers uh, are going to be 25 and the uh, sine 30. When I do that, um, I get a, a delta y of uh, 6.5, uh, sorry, 7.97 meters. So now I know that just about 8 meters uh, above the ground is where that collision takes place. Okay, so uh, the real fun is about to begin now. I know uh, my starting position is actually at 7.97, and uh, what I'm going to do now is use the first equation of motion and say that my final y position, which is going to be 0 on the ground, is going to be equal to my initial y position, which is going to be this number that I just found, uh, plus my initial y component of velocity. I know that from my conservation of momentum problem uh, earlier on, the y component of velocity is 11.32 times time plus one half a t squared. I want to figure out how long it's going to take from that point to get down to the ground. 
y final is 0, y initial is 7.97, uh, plus my initial velocity in the y direction, that's 11.32 meters per second. I'm going to leave the units out uh, just for a second times time. Uh, plus one half a, which is negative 9.8, so that's going to be negative 4.9 t squared. Uh, this is uh, a problem that's going to be solved with the uh, quadratic formula. Uh, you could recognize uh, very quickly if I were to rearrange this in kind of standard form, so I'd get negative 4.9 t squared plus 11.32 t plus 7.97. I, you know, if you want to, you can multiply everything by negative 1 if you want your leading term here to be positive. Either way, I've got values for A, B, and C. A is going to be uh, negative 4.9, B is equal to 11.32, and C is equal to 7.97. Uh, I've run that through a quad solve on my calculator. Um, this would take me a long time. Uh, five minutes or so just to uh, do that manually in a calculator. So I got two, two time routes here. I got a time of 2.88 seconds and I also get a negative time route of negative 0.565 seconds. Um, I know from doing these problems before that uh, of course that collision with the ground didn't happen uh, just over half a second uh, before the event. Uh, it has to happen after. So this is the uh, amount of time that it takes for the clay pigeon to hit the ground on its new trajectory. So now that I have that, I can then uh, figure out, since I know it's x component of velocity, I can figure out how long, uh, I'm sorry, how far, what its range is going to be from that point of impact. Remember earlier in the problem we solved for the total range, which is 55.2, uh, and if I divide that in half, uh, you know, half of that range is uh, 55.2 over 2 or 27.6. So I have 27.6 meters is really my starting point. That's how far away that this pellet embeds itself into the skeet. And now I'm basically using this information as a brand new trajectory problem to add to it. Okay, so um, in the x direction, I know that velocity is equal to distance in the x direction over time. So multiplying the x component of velocity uh, times time is going to give me my x distance. So this is going to be the 2.88 seconds that I just solved for. I'm going to multiply it by my uh, x component of velocity, which I solved for earlier. After the collision, that's the 20.42 meters per second. So uh, I do that multi and multiply that by time. That's going to give me this uh, distance in the x direction, and I get uh, 58.8. Uh, sorry, 58.7 meters. And now I can say, okay, 58.7 plus 27.6 um, gives me 86.3 meters. So the total range, uh, new, the new range, I guess, or with the pellet in it. Um, is 86.3 meters. The old range, if you will, without the pellet in it, if that hadn't have happened or if I had missed, uh, we figured out the first thing in this problem was uh, 55.2 meters. So we'll just take the difference between those two and uh, we get uh, a difference of about 31 meters, 31.1 meters being the difference, and that leads us to 31 meters being our answer uh, to part B of this problem, uh, which was how much further does it go. Finally, the last thing that we need to do is figure out how much higher uh, does it go, what's the difference in height. Um, since I have my y component of velocity after the collision, I can uh, one more time um, ans uh, answer the question, how much higher does it go uh, from that point? All right, uh, I'm ready to do that. So now I can say uh, for the last time, uh, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta y. I'm trying to solve for delta y. So I'm going to get v final squared minus v initial squared divided by 2a. 
And uh, the final velocity, when it reaches that maximum height, is going to be 0. So I'm going to get 0 my, uh, minus my initial velocity in the y direction just after the collision. That's the 11.32 meters per second. I need to remember to square that. And I'm going to divide that by 2 times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now that I've done all of that, I can find that the delta y here, in this case, is going to be 6.5 meters. And that was a lot of work, but definitely each one of the steps uh, was were once you kind of parse it down into um, or boil it down into its parts, you say that each step is uh, quite manageable.